Just present some straightforward causes, so, uh, cases. So uh, we don't do, for example, colored cyst removal. Uh, we do it microscopic, endoscopic assisted for visualization, but in general we do it standard. The equipment is quite limited we use, so uh, Mayfield fixation. We have an endoscope with uh, one working channel, and uh, so with one working channel you are even limited with your possibilities to on, on manipulation. We use a Fogarty monopolar in some cases of forceps or uh, for example in difficult cases for penetration we use a pair of scissors. So this is a case similar to what we have seen 13 months ago with the supracellar cyst causing the head uh, difference to be, uh, to be too big and it's always very important that you as it, it was visible with the presentation before that you really think about what you want to with your intervention because you have to choose your trajectory and you can't uh, manipulate it's impossible you will harm the fornix you will cause uh, hemorrhage in the parenchyma use we always say to our residents don't do ventricular tourism so it's it's dangerous yeah it's really dangerous so uh, choose what you want to do before and then do the job and otherwise you have to do a second intervention however so this is after puncturing the lateral ventricle right on you see um, uh, the cyst in this case we uh, t uh, took a, uh, not for perforation but for shrinking, we took a bipolar uh, coagulation and then it just takes time. You have to shrink it stepwise. Shrink, shrink. So, and uh, now you, the, the forearm Monroy, there's no major attachment so um, um, there's some kind of communication, left-right communication already. Now you have this nice view similar to what you have seen, the pituitary stalk, the clinets, posterior, the pulsation, but apparently it's not completely free. And only if you have really uh, made a penetration so that uh, the subarachnoid space is accessible, then there will be a clinical effect. Now it's quite floating and uh, we let it like this you can could even uh, enlarge it, of course. There you can, of course. In this case where you have a lot of space, you can visualize it. So this was a, a lady with uh, 33 year old, which uh, had typical signs of acute hydrocephalus, which was visible in the CT scan. The family reported that there are some memory disturbances, and we saw this mask, a thalamic mask, and um, we decided to carry out a hydrocephalus treatment and a tumor biopsy. And what may be perhaps very important that in general, so you may have a risk of bleeding, of course, with the ETV, but also with the tumor biopsy, but in general, perform first the ventricular cystinostomy because there's a less risk of hemorrhage, uh, which may blur your vision. And after you've done that, then go for tumor biopsy. And you see, it's not, it's not that chronic, so it's not that transparent like you may see it in other cases. And there the, the basal artery is just behind it, so it's a bit atypical, more lateral, the perforation we choose. And it's a, it's a quite standard uh, procedure. That's very nice about it. You can see it anywhere. So this, this, this is a tumor. Yeah, not too superficial. And if you if you have appropriate um, pieces, stop. Yeah, stop before it starts to bleed, and you will have some trouble. So it was a glabrostoma, but it was one of the few uh, patients. She's now six years on follow up, just biopsy, and she went well. No, she's lucky, yes. But the memory disturbance uh, after radiation uh, therapy, uh, so she, it's a problem. 
but uh, otherwise she's doing quite fine. And yeah, here you see the mass. Now it's follow up, six years follow up. And you see that the tumor is literally not anymore present. And there you see this T2 artifact uh, due to the CSF tumor. And yeah, this arachnoid cyst, it's always a matter of debate to if you do surgery or not. Patients uh, go uh, to, with headache to uh, their GP or neurologist and they make a picture like that. But this is one of these cases where there's some mass effect uh, visible and we just made parietal excess perpendicular to the plant root. And it's the, the, you can do it microsurgical, but what is nice that you don't empty the room. The, you don't, yeah, yeah, and you don't have a collapsing space, and so it's quite good to work, and you have less risk of a hematoma or stuff like that. Yeah, and it's always the same technique. You do some shrinkage to get resistance, and if you have some resistance, you can perforate it easily, and then uh, you make the communication. That's always the same same principle. Yeah. can because it's not a high flow if you have a high flow hydrocephalus or high pressure then the opening may be small but if it's low flow then it's better to make a big uh, opening I think that's perhaps the rule which is mentionable so follow up was uh, fine like this and the last video just what may appear that there's some bleeding when doing ETV and it's the, the simplest method to, to stop it, just to stay in place, make a bit of compression in it, ask the anesthesiology if there's any change in blood pressure or heart rate, and then it stops perfectly like this. Thank you.